Okay, so uh, today we are going to, uh, to continue the, the topic about uh, uh, components and state and how, the, how to organize basically a, a React application. Hmm? And uh, uh, as you, you, remember, you may remember, uh, basically React is, is, uh, is based, all React applications are based on a tree of components. And uh, uh, just as a, rem as a reminder, uh, these uh, uh, components uh, uh, are here um, are uh, tend to be pure reactive uh, functions okay that will compute uh, some rendering so they compute some rendering uh, of the element tree render what are you writing render of the element tree uh, so we here we are our code that will render the the element tree starting from okay this is a function so the function may only depend on its input. We are trying to, to build a pure function, okay? Um, and these inputs are the properties. We already uh, saw some of them uh, last, last week. Uh, the properties that each component may pass down uh, to the lower components. Uh, and the state. Today's, uh, or this week is uh, mostly about the state. Um, how to uh, manage the state within components and how to pass the state around uh, across different components. Um, the difference here between the property and the state is that you see that the state is uh, uh, bidirectional. So you can, you can both read and write uh, the state information from your component. Okay. So a state is a sort of a private storage space where a component can store some information. Hmm? Uh, the, this is not mm, very complex by itself. Uh, it uh, becomes complex when you want a different component uh, to access or to modify, to read or to modify my state. Hmm? And that is what uh, we are we we are um, we are seeing today. Hmm? Uh, there's also a third uh, option for giving information to a component uh, that is called the context. Context is a sort of, we'll see that uh, in more detail next week uh, because we'll, we don't need it right now. Uh, basically, it's a sort of, um, of, um, of a shared state. So a state that is valid for the whole application or for a part of the whole application and that is, that is automatically available to all the components that then they need them. Okay, so for example, an information whether a user is logged in or not may be useful for uh, all the all the information, all the components. An information about uh, whether um, the language of the website should be displayed in Italian or in English or in French is some information that should arrive to, to, to should get to every component basically uh, that is going to render any text or, or image or whatever. And uh, um, and so uh, we don't want to have the burden of passing component to component to component all this information because everybody needs it. So we put it in one place, the context that is accessible, automatically accessible to every component that needs that that kind of information. So this will be just a, a, an easy addition to the concept of state uh, that we'll see uh, next week. Um, so basically, the props uh, is something that uh, we already uh, know. We had a bit of experience last week, also with the labs. Um, and uh, this in the, the, about the state, uh, we saw a first example uh, where the state, uh, uh, we, we understood that it holds some data, and this data is local to the component. Okay, so basically the, the property of state is that it's a private data to the component, only the component itself can access the data, and uh, at the same time, it's uh, uh, only mutable. So I can so I can see it only if uh, from inside the component, and they can modify it from inside the component. But the important part here is that it's the only mutable uh, variable that you may have inside that, that function. Hmm? So it's in a sort is is an exception to the rule of having pure functions. Okay. Um, Passing properties is something we already know. So when we call a component, we can pass any attribute, and this attribute is automatically converted as a property of the parameter uh, received by the function that we, by convention, we tend to call this parameter props. And <clears throat> these properties that are received by the function 
uh, are all read only so they're all uh, only uh, received by the function that may use them to uh, customize its rendering or to pass them along to uh, its children basically hmm? okay uh, about the state uh, we saw last week uh, that uh, we we there's a strange function called use state uh, that was used to create a state hmm? as a new state variable and uh, we call that uh, is a hook function okay so let's uh, mm, have a look right now at uh, the concept of hooks in uh, in react and in particular about the state hooks okay so we stop here for a moment before going into designing the component in react we stop here for a moment and have a look at the hooks uh, in in react itself right so and then we come back here to uh, to continue how to you to see how to use hooks uh, at least the state hooks uh, in our application okay so hooks uh, is a strange name um, but uh, it suggests that it's something something that is hooking uh, adding uh, inserting some behavior into our function components okay it's giving sub superpowers to our uh, functional components um, in particular, we uh, there are several hooks that we are going to study. Some some of them are predefined. Some maybe also in in external modules. Uh, today we are basically looking at the state hooks. Okay, so the main definition and the use state. The others will be described in next weeks uh, when we need them. So next week we will use uh, the context, and uh, after that uh, use effects when we have uh, when we move to uh, client server applications. Um, okay, so what are hooks? Uh, you may remember that we said at the beginning that uh, uh, React components may be described as classes or as functions, and we made a choice of uh, uh, of describing them as function in this course. But of course, you can uh, you can also study how, how to do that with classes. Um, functions are, are simpler, of course, uh, as we are using them, and. Uh, um, so why uh, in the past uh, there was some interest uh, in uh, in creating components with a more complex structure more complex syntax that are javascript classes well basically uh, because uh, the classes may have some state so a, a when you declare a class you have some instance variables uh, that you can that can remember the state of that function um, so that's uh, uh, may have the associated with the state they also may have some so-called lifecycle methods so you can know when a class is created when a class is destroyed and so on and so you may do some actions according to to those uh, behaviors so uh, until um, three years ago if you wanted to have a component uh, with state or with some complex behavior you had to use a class uh, then they invented the hooks uh, and, and on the other hand function components uh, were pure functions like we described them so a pure function can uh, cannot store any information so cannot have any state um, it cannot change anything outside its environment so it cannot have any side effects that will change something as a consequence of some action that you do inside the function so for example if you have a button <laughs> and this button is called login this login button could not you know if it's an, if it wasn't a function it could not affect the uh, the global state of the application okay so um, there was some limitations for the for the nature of a function that required to use classes for more complex behaviors uh, basically they are the consequences of having a pure function uh, so what they did in the react uh, the react uh, developer community they invented a way to bypass this restriction basically they invented a way and it was uh, initially proposed in 2018 and uh, was uh, uh, declared stable the one like six months later so actually it's something um, that is quite stable since uh, a couple of years now so we are quite confident in using them and uh, uh, it's a set of additions to function components to functional components that uh, um, allow us uh, to inject some limited uh, behavior which is not 
uh, available to pure functions like uh, having a state li like having side effects uh, like controlling external resources and so on from inside the function so hooks are making a function a pure function no longer pure okay but it doesn't mean that you can you know access and modify global values or whatever the exceptions are controlled by the behavior of this uh, special mechanism uh, later on we'll see a bit about how this mechanism is implemented uh, but for the moment let's just put ourselves into the um, from the point of view of the users of hooks okay and so how how to use them then we will ask some ask ourselves some question how how may they work and but uh, uh, we'll discuss this later once we get the gist of how using them um, the, the question from Gebeng uh, is uh, if whether uh, for the exam if it's compulsory to use function components or you might use class components the answer is that you may use whatever you like okay as long as you are in the react e ecosystem um, last year we invested a lot on using class components but uh, from what we are seeing uh, the say the the world the developers are, are moving uh, uh, gradually towards the function only components because they are basically simpler to write and to maintain but if you want or maybe you have some already some code or some experience with class components uh, feel free to use them we are not going to explain them in this course we don't need the time to do both um, but uh, of course you can use them the, the general rule for the exam is that if you know something there's a module there's a syntax or something that is javascript and it's react you always are always free to use it um okay and so what are these mechanisms that are uh, being inserted into the um, these uh, pure functions to make them more complex more advanced uh, there are three main hooks uh, that are these three that are we are going to see uh, use state use effect and use context uh, today we start with the state like defining state variables Use effect is very important because it can define so-called side effects. Side effects means reading or writing anything outside the render tree. So a pure function, the component function, can only modify its render tree when it's called. If you want to modify anything else, including, for example, doing a client server call to contact a server, um, you can do that. And this is called a side effect because it will affect something outside uh, the render tree the, which is the normal return value of the function okay so we are going to use it a lot uh, when we do a synchronous call to the server uh, right now when you are just um, creating client only uh, component uh, is not very useful for the moment and the context as we as we mentioned before use content is used for accessing uh, the general context of the application uh, this, the, the terminology context consumer is something we learn when we see the context hmm? and there are others these are all the uh, hooks that are already predefined by react but of course when you import some further modules they may define their own uh, hooks in addition to these ones okay so let's focus on the use state hook so the use state function um, uh, okay, just to answer this question about lifecycle methods, uh, uh, lifecycle methods are methods that are called uh, in different points of time when uh, the life of a component changes. So when uh, when a component is is first displayed on the screen, when a component value changes something some, uh, somehow when a component is deleted from the screen it's called mounted or unmounted in the dom uh, so a component is something that is created is mutated is deleted and so on all these events uh, that concern the life cycle of a component uh, may have callbacks basically so you may attach your code to uh, special moments uh, in the in the in the component life and this is what is captured in, in the hooks by also by the use effect uh, in use effect you can uh, specify that some side effects should happen when the component uh, first mounts where the component disappears and something like that hmm? we'll see that uh, um, later on um, 
but okay let's let's go back to the definition of the use state hook use state is a function uh, provided by the react library so you have to import it of course from the react library and uh, uh, it's a function that returns an array with two elements okay an array with two elements so usually you assign it uh, by a destructuring statement uh, where this array is immediately the first and second element of the array are immediately saved into two different variables so we don't care about the array itself but we, we care more about uh, the individual um, components um, and every time every time you you call use state you are creating a new state variable okay uh, you don't need to specify which kind of value is uh, stored into that variable so it may be a number it may be a boolean maybe an object uh, whatever you want Okay. You don't have to, you don't write it anywhere. You don't declare it. You don't need to declare it. Okay. Um, use state uh, takes one parameter, uh, one parameter here, which is the initial value of the state. So the starting value. So in this case, we are creating one state variable that starts with the value true. So we can we may call it a boolean state variable, but Actually, the type, as you know, in JavaScript is not bound to the variable, so it may change later in the future. And what is the name of this state variable? Well, the name is uh, uh, implied by the variable where we are storing the first element. So basically hidden, so the first argument of the return value is the name uh, uh, of, of a variable that will hold the current value of the state. So after this statement, uh, the variable hidden will point to a value, in this case, true. So the, the initial value, the default value of the variable itself. OK, so it's a reference to the current value of the state. It's a reference to be handled as a constant reference. So we can use hidden inside our return method. We use it many times to change the behavior of the render methods. So whether the hidden is true or false we are going to display or not uh, some some elements so uh, for example here we are using the the, the ternary operator the question mark uh, saying well if it's hidden then show this text uh, otherwise uh, show that other text uh, and so on okay um, but it's normally a, a value that we may use to customize uh, the rendering of, of the um, of the DOM of the of the React uh, element tree that we are creating. So so far so good. We are creating a new variable. We are setting an initial value for that variable. Uh, we say that this variable should be treated as uh, read only. And uh, what can we do if we want to modify this value? Well, this value can be modified only through the function that usually we call set with the name of a state. So, of course, these names are names of our variables. We can call it like, like we want it, but we, by, by convention, the first one is, a, is, a, is represent the value, and the second, one, the second one is written with the set syntax. Okay, We call it a setter for the state. And so whenever we want to modify, for some reason, the current value of the state, we should we may only do that through this set hidden call and set hidden is a function that will modify the var the variable that the hidden variable is pointing to currently and so we can specify the new value of course uh, for uh, for the state variable um, okay um, so to answer Alfredo, use state, you only use, use, use it once and uh, that creates the states. And the set hidden or the setter function, you, you can use it whenever you want to update the state. Okay, at every function call, uh, you create a state and you may update the state uh, as many times as you want. Uh, when you want it okay so your state creates a new state variable and the state variable is coupled 
uh, it's coupled with a function that is used to update the variable itself. So it's a strong uh, relationship between these two values. Okay. The strange thing, the strange behavior of the use state function is that if you call, um, whenever the component is rendered, of course the function is called, but the state variable is only created the first time. This is the basically the strange behavior, what is outside the pure function style. Uh, the function somehow, we'll see it later, somehow remembers that that state variable was, was already created in the past. So if I'm rendering a component for a second, for a third time, uh, we are just attaching to the previous start, uh, state variable instead of creating a new one every time. So this default, so this initial value is only applied the first time the component is created and displayed. And uh, all the other times, uh, we are just remembering the value for the previous, uh, from the previous call of the function, that is from the previous rendering of, of, of the component. Okay. Um, so we have these two pieces of information, the current value and a function to update the current value. Always use the function if you want to update the state, otherwise it won't work, basically, because it will be reassigning the variable that will, will no longer link with the state. So, as usual, um, you cannot just re redefine the variable, it's not mutable, it uh, should be read-only. It is mutable, but it's only mutable in a controlled way, like we said before. We are breaking the, the, the rule of the pure function, but we should break them within uh, some strict rules okay so that react will notice that the state is changed okay and react needs to notice that the state is changed because for example uh, when we uh, change the value of a state the component should be repainted should be re-rendered because if a state changes probably the the rendering tree will have to change too so React needs to know that we change the state variable so that it can re-render the component and possibly update the DOM with the new value. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, updating the value, and we see we see that in a moment, uh, it may be just as simple as providing you uh, a new value, or maybe we, we may provide a callback function here. So it will be a narrow function uh, that will be called to update the state later. Okay, um, and we see why why this is useful. Basically, to delay the computation of the value when the actual update will happen. Um, Alessio is asking whether all the components of the same type, so all the instances of a short text, will share the same state. Uh, the answer is no. Every instance of a component uh, has their own state. Okay, so if I have uh, three components that are a component A and then component A again, and then component A again, of course, and they have a state variable that's called V, each one of them will have their own uh, copy of, of, of the state variable V. Okay, uh, this variable is created once per each component, the first time that component is displayed. And then is remembered by the component itself. So it's something that lives uh, some way outside the component by attached to it. But every instance of the component will have a, an independent value of the state. Remember the rule, the state can only be accessed, read and written from inside the component. So from inside my component instance, I have my state, and I'm the, I'm the only one who is able to read and to write it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Here, here are some some more details, uh, but basically is what we already saw uh, in in the example. We have this use state that, re that returns uh, uh, this couple of, of values uh, stored into an array. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't think there's nothing, anything new here. I will just uh, keep the slide for remembering. Okay. Uh, basically, just remember that every time you call a state, uh, you modify state, uh, mm, normally uh, React uh, will re-render the component, okay? Because either the props 
or the state have changed and so this will require the component to be reevaluated okay but it's not a problem hmm? um, the state no carlo is not only boolean maybe anything any value uh, and we see maybe some uh, with some examples maybe numbers maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, objects even uh, arrays lists uh, okay can may, can be any type of object just remember that the only way of uh, uh, updating the state uh, is, uh, let's read this word together, to replace the current state with a new one. So you can never update a state. If, if you have an object as a state, uh, the only way to modify it is to recreate another object with the modified values. Okay, see, if your state is an array, you cannot just modify the third element of the array. You should create a new array uh, with a modified value. Hmm? So in that way, because set state always replaces the old value with the new one. And so if you just want to modify the old one, you need to recreate a new one uh, uh, with some modifier. So it's a sort of a, uh, immutable snapshot of the state uh, that is replaced by another different uh, immutable snapshot of the future state that we want to set. Uh, so this is the reason this uh, uh, immutability and this total replace mechanism is the reason why usually we prefer to have many state variables with simpler values instead of one big state variable with all the values together because when we rebuild it you, we, it's, it's more complex if, instead if you have many state variables they are independent from each other and you can update each other uh, each one uh, independently okay um, and so this setting function as we said, uh, can just uh, receive a value, and it's easy. And this value, or maybe a constant, or maybe dependent on the properties. Remember, the properties are, should be considered as constants inside the function, because whenever a property changes, the function is re is called again. Okay, so every time you have a new value of the const, the, the properties, but inside the function they cannot change; they are constant. So we have a, you may have any kind of expression of computation here uh, that involves uh, uh, props and other constant values for setting the state. The state is replaced, as we said before, and usually, usually we uh, we should have uh, you should not change the type uh, of the state variable. Okay, it's not forbidden basically, but uh, uh, for our own sake, for our own mental sake, uh, if we know that state variable is, is going to contain a string let's not change it into a boolean because otherwise every time we use the state variable in our code we need we need to remember oh this can be this type or that other type and we'll make things more complex because we don't know when this will change okay so um, usually let's try to be consistent if we are initializing a variable with a boolean value this means that we always want to store a boolean value inside if we initialize it with a string this means that we are always going to store strings inside and so on. It's our choice. It's not a constraint, but uh, it's a good choice. The alternative, uh, as we said, is to provide as a, a callback function uh, as a, a parameter of the setter variable. So usually uh, we use uh, the arrow syntax just for, for shortness. And this uh, uh, updating function takes uh, as one argument which is the old value of the state and returns and should return a new variable, uh, new value, sorry, that will be set as the new value of the state. Okay. Um, so we have one example let's say okay we want i want to this is uh, for example uh, um something that we would write we would uh, have for a counter for example something that counts uh, the events counter clicks uh, every time something happens uh, we want to incre increment uh, the number the state variable steps so we set the steps uh, from the old value to the old value plus one okay uh, this is not the same and we'll see that uh, in an example later on, as writing set state, uh, uh, sorry, set, set steps of steps plus one. Hmm. Uh, 
if I write set steps, uh, st st steps is the, is the state variable. If I write set steps uh, with the parameter steps of plus one, of course, if, if steps is three, this will update the state to four. In the other example, uh, we store a callback function and we ask this callback function when it's executed to take the current value of the state at that time when it will be executed and compute uh, the incremented value. What is the difference? The difference is that here in the second case, uh, this expression is evaluated when set step is executed. So it's synchronous with the, with the component rendering. In the other case, in the right case here, this function will be executed and the, num the number of current steps will be evaluated only when the callback is called later. And since the callbacks are, are synchronous, it may happen then between the moment when I'm writing the set state and the moment when the actual update happens, it may happen that this state variable has already changed. And so I, I, the risk is uh, uh, to lose uh, some updates uh, if, we, uh, if we compute, if we, we take the current value too soon and compute some expression about that. So to make it uh, uh, short, uh, um, let's make it a rule. Every time the new state depends on the old state, every time, we should have a delayed evaluation of the current state. So I'm using the value of the state only when I I'm ready to change it in the callback function in the future. Even here with set hidden, with a constant, uh, the value is never changed synchronously. It's always scheduled to be changed asynchronously. Okay, because we are telling React, okay, I want to change the state. So even if you're writing a constant here, you're not sure that the value changes immediately. It will change when this, uh, say, asynchronous modification will be done. Okay, so it's nothing, uh, remember we are in JavaScript, so nothing is really synchronous. Hmm? Okay, um, there's a question from Claudio who is asking, uh, uh, what if we pass a number and the component is expecting a string? Uh, it will just store whatever you are passing that. There's no conversion. It doesn't remember the type of the previous value. It just replaces, previously the variable was pointing to a number and I'm passing a string, okay, then the, the state variable will, will point to a string. But there's no, uh, no memory of what uh, the, what, what was, there's no attempt from the part of React to conserve the type of the, um, of the state variable. It's all our responsibility. If you're passing a different type of object, a different type of object will be stored with no conversion. Okay, so uh, let's remember this rule and when, uh, now it seems clear, but uh, uh, of course in the examples uh, uh, we must uh, remember, okay, every time uh, the, set state, the setter function receives an expression that depends only on props or a callback that depends also on the current state. There are two different words, right? let's not mix them. Um, okay, and then we have the default value, which is the only parameter of the use state function. So here we had this true as an example. Uh, the default value is just the parameter of the function itself. It's only used the first time the variable is created, so it's not reinitialized every time the component is updated. Only the first time. Uh, you can define a new value or you can just leave it undefined, it depends on you. Uh, you may uh, derive the initial value from the properties of the object, but just remember that if the properties change, that value will not be updated, of course, because it will be from the moment you create a state variable, that state variable will be independent from its creation. Even if in the code the use state is executed every time, because it's at the beginning of the function, uh, the, the variable is not recreated and reinitialized every time. So it's remembered, and so the initial value is only taken once. And also here, uh, we may set a value, or it may, we may pass a function 
that will be used for asynchronous initialization. So the state variable will be initialized with a callback function that will return a new value. This is especially valid if uh, the, the value, the initial value, uh, depends on some external factors and so is not immediately ready as a property. So if both in the use state and in the setter function, we can always provide a constant or a callback. In the case of callback, of course, the value will be uh, computed when the callback is executed. So let's uh, maybe have a look at this simple example. Uh, let's try to recreate it ourselves. I already published some of these examples in the uh, on the in the GitHub, but I think it's better to write them together. So let's. Uh, make some zoom to make it more readable okay so I this is just an empty react project I created just the uh, create react act uh, um, what, what did I do I I just uh, used the create react act uh, before um, and imagine we want to make a, a counter so a number that will increase or decrease every time I click uh, on a button or, or a link or whatever. Okay, so our app uh, could uh, just call a counter component. Hmm? Um, and of course, there's nothing inside it. Okay, we want to render a counter component. Of course, we need to, to create this component. So we just, for the example, we don't create, let's not create many files. Let's just write it here. Okay. Props. We always write props even even in the case where we are not really uh, using any properties just for uh, for consistency, even if this parameter is not used. And so, uh, what we are trying to render, it's it's always convenient uh, to uh, first write a, a static version of the component just to to check whether we have it right and then make it dynamic okay so for example return uh, what we want to return is a, a sort of a for example uh, a paragraph where we have a number maybe 33 followed by a button uh, with a plus sign and a button with a minus sign and maybe a button with a reset sign. Okay, something like this. And uh, if we run this application, hmm, okay, so I'm not in the correct directory. Uh, uh, what is called set examples. Okay, this is what I get. Okay. Okay. So this is just static text. It's a button that do nothing and uh, and the number that, that doesn't change. Okay. So we want to turn this component into a counter that keeps the value of this number and may change it when we call the when we press these buttons, right? So the first modification is uh, turn the static value into a variable. Uh, so we we may use it. Uh, so for this reason, we need a state variable that is able to remember the current value. Okay, you cannot use a, a, a normal variable like this. Let count equal to 33 and use, uh, for example, uh, count here. Okay, uh, well, you can, but uh, the problem is that this variable will be initialized every time the component change for so for example if i try to increase it for example on click 
I will execute the code for uh, incremented account. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is say, okay, this counter is available, and every time I click on this button, I increment this variable. And uh, if I try to click here, it does not increment. Well, actually it does, but it doesn't. I mean, it will increment this value. React will notice that something has changed, tries to re-render this component, but when it re-renders this component, it will recreate a new local variable and will assign the same default to the same local variable. So this is, a few, uh, this is why we call it a pure function. Every time it's called, it may only depend on these properties. It may not depend on what I did in the previous invocation of this function. So I need, I need a mechanism for remembering this count across function calls. Um, is there a way to spot this kind of errors? I don't think so. But usually you, you, you will get used to not to think about that, not to, use, not to write this code, basically. Okay? You should all, we, we, we will try always to be explicit about uh, uh, when we write a component, uh, we will write down, okay, these are the properties it gets, these are the state variables it uses. Let's be explicit about those. And then let's try only to use those. So the variables, the local variables, will be just local for local computation. And we know they will be destroyed and recomputed from scratch. OK? Uh, Giuseppe is asking, if the parent component changes the property every time it's destroyed, losing the state. No, the state is remembered. We'll see that in a moment. OK? Uh, the state variable, once we create it, uh, will stay even if the component properties change. It will be destroyed only when the component itself is destroyed. Hmm? But let's do one step at a time. Uh, so let's convert this into a state. So let's say use state 33. Use, for using use state, of course, we must import it. So go here, control space. Uh, doesn't import it. You're lazy. Use state. Usually it should work. No suggestion. Thank you. So I import it by hand. Import use state from React. Uh, of course, uh, it's not just count, but now I have to structure the state as a variable and that is an update function set count let's remove this because it's bad uh, it may be let it may be const uh, as you prefer yeah it may also be const because we are never explicitly setting uh, or we should never be explicitly setting this variable it will be it's better also because it will also prevent us from doing, for trying to do count plus plus or something like that, uh, because it will be incompatible with the constant variable. Hmm? So, thanks for the suggestion. It will be better to use const because it will ensure that we don't try to play tricks with the state variable itself. Okay. Uh, so, right now we are using the variable in the same way. Hmm? Nothing changed. If we save the the, of course, we have a warning that set count is not used yet, of course. If you go to the browser, again, we have the same layout. Hmm? So we have created a local variable with the, with the default value of 33. The difference is that this local variable is not uh, destroyed and recreated every time, but is just remembered. And so when we press the plus button, uh, we can uh, well, let's start first with the with the with the X button, which is easier. Uh, we want to reset the counter, so on click, we execute the the code for setting state to zero. Set sorry, set count. Okay, so when we click on the X button the count will be reset to zero. 
what happens here we are is that we are scheduling a modification of the state the, with the new value zero and this state modification will cause the will force the reevaluation of this function so reevaluating this function means that uh, with the new value of course of the of the state and of course this new value will be used here in the code so ideally this should work uh, does it okay this is uh, uh, okay and too, inf uh, too many re-renders we are creating an infinite loop of renders, okay, because we are trying to uh, to set in the count synchronously, so it's calling the function immediately. So it's better to have a, a narrow function. To schedule it for later. So I, I wanted to make an, an intermediate step uh, to reason about that and to go to this final version, but uh, uh, of course it didn't work. Um, the reason is that, uh, yes, the reason is that uh, the previous version didn't work because I will be calling set count when the return statement is executed, okay, uh, not when the button is clicked. So I'm calling this return, just let me modify it again in the wrong way. Hmm? That will explain the error. If I write it like this, I'm uh, creating a button with the onClick property, which is set to the current value, return value of this function call. So I'm calling set count right now, and the possible return value Will be given to one click. I don't want to call set count now. I want to, it to be called when the click button is pressed. So I cannot execute this code here. Here I should not pass a value returned by a, a function call. I should return a callback that will call that function. Okay. So always remember, and otherwise you get that those kind of errors. Always remember to send callbacks whenever you define an event okay should always be a function so it's either a function name or a, a narrow function that you define itself yourself uh, in the place mm -hmm. so in this case when you click on the x the count drops to zero okay and uh, it stays there okay even if we click x uh, many times uh, okay uh, we have no ways of changing it uh, in, an, in any other way hmm? okay how to increase it uh, we do the same on click and uh, we already learned that we always should provide a callback for the click event because we want this callback to be called when the user clicks and what we do on the callback we set count count uh, let's say count plus one this is wrong okay the, we, we should not be doing this but just to explain so when we click on the plus button we execute the set count method by taking the value count plus one and if I save this, it should increase the value, and then I can drop it to zero, and then increase the value, and so on. OK? And every time I click on the plus, what happens is that set count will change the count variable, and automatically, this function is recomputed. And the, re the render function is again recomputed. And if I include, if here, here I only have B, P and buttons and so on, but if I had to include other components, 
um, they will um, be re-rendered too. So every time you render something, also its children will be re-rendered. Okay. So what is wrong with the solution? The wrong with the solution is that if you click, if you are uh, fast enough to click this button, you may lose some changes. You may lose some changes because uh, this uh, set count will use a value of count which is computed at the time when the return instruction is executed. But between the moment when we execute the return, and so we are scheduling this method, and the moment when this method will run, it may happen that the button has been already pressed one or two or more times. So if you are faster in pressing the button, then JavaScript is in scheduling the function, of course not in this example, but if you have a more complex application that is doing a lot of background work, uh, it may happen that when it's really time to increase from 46 to 47, okay, the count variable has already increased to 48 or 50, but you still have the count plus one that you computed before. Okay, so this is the rule that we were discussing before. If the new state, so the argument of set count, depends on the old state, so the count itself, so whenever you find that inside this parenthesis you want to reuse the same state variable, always tell yourself, oh, I should delay this with a callback. And so this in, is not should not be a constant computed when I'm setting the, the event handler. It should be a function, if, uh, the, the argument to, to set set a count should be a function that will return that will take the old count and will return the old count plus one you see that this function will not depend on the directly on the count variable because it will be executed later when this count variable is already a new value so we already get the um, the updated value of the count in the parameter of the arrow function. So it's normal that in this case we have another function inside another arrow function. The first one is for scheduling the event, and the second one is for delaying the computation of the current state. Uh, if I say this, it should work in the same way. If I reload the page, uh, like Andre is asking, it will uh, uh, start for 33 again because we are recreating the component uh, from scratch. And from the moment, uh, it will just be independent, it will uh, move independently. Okay, so the 33 is only used when we load the, the counter for the first time. And if we have many counters, of course, we need to put them inside a fragment. They will have. Uh, uh, they will. So let, let's start the application like this. Uh, each of them is independent, like we said before. Each of them has its own instance of the, of the component and its own private state. Um, okay. And so the same can be done if we want to, maybe let's go into more lines so that it's easier to read. The plus, and the, we can do the same for the minus button. We just have to decrement instead of incrementing the old count. And the resetting button. Like this. So in this case, we have we are, may also increase or decrease or do whatever we want with these functions and reset them and so on. Uh, Pietro is asking why doesn't the React throw an error or display warning? Uh, how can it know? <laughs> uh, how can it know that we are just using 
uh, a variable inside the function call. Hmm? So uh, it's, it would be nice, but uh, I don't think it could detect this kind of. Uh, sometimes the error, okay, the errors can be displayed in the in the console here, but always remember to look in the console of the browser because some runtime errors will be shown or warning will be shown here in the console of the browser. So always remember to keep it open uh, because some, sometimes some useful warnings or errors will happen here. Hmm? Um, uh, so, uh, gaming old count is not defined. Yes, it is. It's the parameter, is the argument of the arrow function. Okay, so this is an arrow function that takes one argument. I call it old count. This is the argument of the of the callback, and they use it in the body of the callback itself. So I define it here in the argument of the callback function. Uh, Andrea, what are what is the, what are is the you say? I didn't get what the last instruction does. Uh, which instruction are you referring to, please? So you can go back to it. Uh, to Pedro, I'm just coming to that in a second. Yes, with the props. Uh, okay, so now it's clear. I hope. Okay, good. And um, so, if there's any still issues, just let me know. Um, Cloud is saying that we use the second arrow function to fix the old count values of our meters so that we are unable to appreciate uh, and get fast changes. Uh, no, um, if there are fast changes, this is the only way to get all of them because all these instructions will be scheduled and executed in the event, the, in the event loop. Remember when we talked about the event loop? Uh, every time uh, a, a callback is scheduled, it will be put into a list, okay? And uh, uh, we have many, let's say, instances of this callback function that are will be lining up, piling up in the event queue. So uh, they will be executed later, probably, but they will be executed, all of them, and in order, uh, in the same order when I, I, I queue them, I, I schedule them, okay? Uh, whenever I execute each of them, the, the value of count at that time in the future will be copied to the old count. Okay, so this also tries to answer to Mathieu. Mathieu, uh, it's a, asynchronously called. When it's called, I take the current value, this is done automatically, by the caller, by React, which is calling the callback, basically, uh, and setting the current value and scheduling the update. It will evaluate the consequence of the update, and then when I, uh, when the second or third or fourth time uh, that this uh, increment function is scheduled will be pulled up from the event queue and uh, executed, then again the current value of count uh, will be taken into account. But the the important thing is that I'm copying count into old count only when I'm in the process of, of executing that code. So I never do some early evaluation of a variable that could change in the future. I'm only using that variable value when I'm ready to change it, and I'm sure there will be no pending changes. All the pending, pending, pen, sorry, all the other pending changes will be later on. Hmm? Um, Okay, so it all, all happens uh, uh, with asynchronous callbacks. So everything, use state is an asynchronous function. Basically, it's not an async with promises, but it will schedule the update uh, asynchronously. Set count also is scheduling something asynchronously. By the way, it's also scheduled by an asynchronous event lender, so it's even more. Um, Giuseppe is telling us that uh, one instance of the callback, one click, can be executed out of order with respect to the other instances. One instance of the callback, or uh, one click. Uh, yes, yes, because uh, each component is independent on its own. 
and uh, it depends on how fast is the browser in scheduling the click event from different buttons so uh, we are we have the guarantee that we have a, a sequence of events inside our component but when it comes to other components uh, they can be rendered independently at different times uh, and so there's no guarantee of synchronization of the events or when we have different components okay uh, of course in this case the 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 time taken the speed needed for updating a variable is so fast uh, that we should not have a problem but when we see some delays uh, uh, or some longer computation may happen maybe we can make an example right now um, Gabriele, yes, you're right. If you don't use the arrow function here, the updated value is will be the value at the time of scheduling and not at the time of execution. And if something changes in the middle, we are losing the changes. Uh, without the arrow function, the change will be scheduled randomly and without the proper order. Yeah, I wouldn't say randomly, but I would say uncontrollably. So I would not, not have any control. Maybe we can do that. We can we can see it. Um, uh, imagine that uh, this callback will uh, take some time to execute. Okay, we can simulate it with with a timer, for example. Okay, uh, so for example, we can define a function uh, increase low. Okay, we define a function inside the let, sorry, in const, where we want to increase the counter after one second, for example. Okay, so we may set a uh, timeout uh, where we have a, a timeout a function that will set a state. Uh, set state oh I always set count sorry I still keep of count plus one after mm, 500 milliseconds and on the plus I'm just calling this function increase slow Okay, so what I did is, well, this the modification here is very stupid. Instead of writing the callback function inside, I just uh, uh, define the function outside and I have, I have the reference here. So nothing special, just copy the reference for, for having more, more space for writing the function. This function, when I click the plus button, okay, will not uh, in, call the set count immediately, but it will call it after 500 milliseconds. Okay, so it should work. I hope I didn't try it before, but we are. So let's reload it. I click on plus, and it doesn't work. Sorry, what's wrong? So increase low. Uh, so yes, of course. This should be the callback reference, okay? Okay, I click, and you see that it will change after a while. Click, change, click, change. Click, 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 change only once. Click, 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 change only once. This is wrong, right? Because I'm clicking many times, and since the update is delayed, I, it will... Uh, store the increased value from the time I, I clicked and non, not from the time is executed okay and sometimes you see that some okay more uh, changes are and this is the, the the mistake for calling the set count with a future value but if we do the the right version so in the set count here I'm using the callback then I should not lose any clicks so if I click it will change 34 35 I click three times one two three and will 
update to 30i. So I'm not losing an update. One, two, three, four, eight, we click very fast. And after 500 milliseconds from each click, I will have an update because it's, um, it has been scheduled. Okay, so I'm not losing an event here. Okay, this, of course, this is fake because we are inserting a fake delay that is not realistic, but it may uh, represent the case when we need to contact a web server for updating some information, for getting some updated data. So we'll take some milliseconds. And we don't want to lose what happens in those milliseconds and don't want to, to forget those or to actually delete the new information that came in the middle. Okay. Uh, this also shows us that when we have some complex uh, operation to do in a callback, it's better you know, to create a, a, an extra function and just give the reference to that function um, just, just for clarity, for avoiding having too much code inside the return statement. Okay, so this is the only, the only uh, actual trick uh, in the use state. Uh, just remember to uh to use always a, a callback the last point uh, that we wanted to do is to uh, say customize the counter with the initial value so for example i want the first counter to start uh, at value 31 or 10 for example the second to start uh, at value 20 and the third one i want to start uh, with value minus one i don't know and I just uh, passing a new property to a counter, and I can use this property, props dot start for initializing the state variable. And uh, if I run it now, I refresh the page the counters are initialized from different values and they i may change them oh i have i still have the delay here so <laughs> and they can reset them so each component uh, will uh, in this case initialize the the starting value of the count according to some property given by the um, by the counter in the case when this value would change because maybe it's, maybe it's depending on some state of the app, uh, this count is not updated again. Okay, it's, it only this property here, this value inside this function use state is only used once and only once. Okay, when the counter is first created. So uh, we could use, uh, for example, instead of zero for the x, uh, the props. Uh, dot set count set uh, no sorry prop dot start so inside the render function we always use the latest version the last value of the property as it's normal for a function the function gets a new value of the of its parameters and so the only the latest value of the of the of the parameters is available inside the function the only uh, use state is an exception, okay? It's not a normal function. And uh, as exception, uh, its argument is only evaluated when the state is created and not every time, okay? Just remember that. If you change the props, uh, the initial value will not change. Uh, and of course, in this case, we are using prop.start uh, so that when I click on the X, uh, I will reset it to the initial value, customized for each component and not just uh, in unconditionally to zero. Okay, so this is basically the, the, the mechanism that we want to use, uh, and uh, uh, it's easy because it's we have a state variable that we can read, use, and modify from inside the same component where it's defined. Hmm? This is why it's easy to do this. In this case, it's a it's an it's a no it's a number. Okay. If I want to have more state variables, I can just call use states many times. And every time I will get a new variable and a new setter function for that variable. Count, set count, mod, set mod, and so on. And they may be booleans, maybe numbers, maybe strings, uh, maybe even more complex objects. Uh, no, there's no limitations. Okay. 
uh, and of course inside our code uh, we can we can we may call the setters with constant values uh, or with callbacks and so on so all these state variables will be independent from each other and may be updated independently from each other the global state of a component is the combination of all the state variables uh, the react developers the documentation suggests you to use uh, freely many uh, state variables instead of trying to pack into one state variable many many properties uh, with, a, with, a, with a complex object okay because it's easier to update uh, because just remember you will never update the state you will always replace it with the with a new value okay so these are the basics uh, the state inside one component uh, but what happens when uh, we want to um, have a, we have an, an application with many state, uh, say, uh, objects, uh, with many components, sorry, each of them has some state, and we want a component to share its state with the other components, okay? So maybe let's go back to the, to the other slides, and we may continue. Because we said, uh, okay, we use the use state hook. Now we know everything we need to know about the use state hook. Um, yes, yes, what, what I said, uh, what I just said is uh, also an answer to um, available. Say, okay, but why do we use many states variables? Uh, it's not against uh, the function. Yes. Uh, having many state variables uh, separate. Okay. Let, let me answer in two ways. First, uh, let's not use a state variable when it, where it's not needed. So well, let's introduce state only when it's really needed. Okay? Uh, don't uh, don't use a state when you could when we could use a property or a value computed by the properties. Hmm? This is important. No, don't pro, uh, create unnecessary state variables. The first rule. The second rule is. Uh, inside a component if you have a state information which is complex it's better to create many smaller variables than one complex object because it will be easier to update and when you update a part of it you don't need to update also the other parts and also for the efficient efficiency point of view react will detect that only some variables changed and not other ones and so it will probably re-render smaller portions of the tree so it's more efficient and also more clear because you only modified what you need. Um, okay. So uh, this is the state example, like we said. Uh, we have the initial version of the state. Uh, we have the we use it, uh, and you remember never to modify the variable directly. Always use the setter function. If we declare it as you suggested with const. Uh, we are automatically protected up against this and uh, uh, the other warning is always use uh, a, a callback function when the new state is updated by taking a, ver a value of the old state um, uh, yes lorenzo a component may have many many state variables just call you states as many times as you need uh, uh, different variables uh, okay when I render a component, uh, usually it's all functional. But when the component is on screen, uh, on the browser, uh, the user may interact with them. So one may, may ask, uh, what, what is the cause of state event of state changes? Basically, the cause of state changes is, in most of the cases, asynchronous events. So the user clicks somewhere, or a, tam a timeout expires, or some data is arriving from, from the server or whatever, and then I need to change some information. Okay, this is why the set function, set English, set count, and so on, uh, are practically always called only from inside event handlers or asynchronous handlers. Because when something happens, I need to update the interface. So otherwise, the interface just stands, stays there. But when a user clicks, I need to process this click, for example or process this new data that was entered and processing that means updating some some state information somewhere okay uh, 
so usually we use uh, let's say the value of the state inside the render for customizing it and we use the setter function inside the event handlers event handlers that may be okay uh, defined in line or may be defined as a constant functions inside the function body and just referred here for for brevity and for readability hmm? so normally you will see the setter calls uh, inside the event handlers and the value inside the body of the return uh, the value the value of the of the state in this case english will never appear inside the event handler because remember the rule that you cannot uh, use uh, the uh, old uh, value or the state variable when you are setting the new one okay so here it's dangerous to use the old value always use the callback function that will give you the, the fresh the fresh and updated value remember the, the the timeout example that we did okay so you can do that outside or you can just put everything inside here of course the syntax here becomes a bit heavy so if, if it's something really really very simple we can write it like this but otherwise if it's a bit complex i will suggest to um, to split it in, a, in separate functions so it's also clear to uh, to the reader okay because we are a, a double level of nesting uh, of function inside uh, JSX expression. So the parentheses are getting uh, heavy. Hmm? Okay, this slide again repeats the same information that we already saw in our example. So I won't, uh, I won't repeat it. Okay, uh, and this leads us to, to our second uh, example. Okay, the second example is about uh, assuming that you have uh, maybe four buttons here. And you want to, uh, your user to click on a button. You have your fa your favorite games, okay. And you want the user to to be able to click on a button, and this will be the selected one. All the other ones will be dimmed out, okay. For example. So, um, I will have a component for each button, and I have a component for grouping all the buttons together. Okay, so uh, maybe let's try to do that uh, in our example. Uh, okay, we have the counters, uh, and after the counters, uh, let's try to. I, I'm just uh, adding this to the, to, our, to our example. Okay, a button group. Okay, uh, that will contain some some information all our buttons what is the button group okay the function button group will be just let me make it bigger uh, group okay uh, may just return uh, different buttons for example uh, uh, let's call it simple button and we may have uh, three of them four or four three let's say that's a three and the simple button props will contain only Sim uh, a button element. Well, you can make it nicer with with the bootstrap if you want, but uh, that will say hi to you. Uh, okay, I need uh, of course a container here, so maybe let's put a div. Okay, so what I what I said is. Uh, um, I have a simple button and uh, I have many instances of this simple button inside a component that they call the button group. Of course, I will need to, to, to parameterize it, okay, to give uh, some dynamic values. But right now, the first version for me is totally static. Okay, so it will become like this. Three buttons called high, 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 okay? Very stupid. 
okay so what i want to do first is to change the text that we have in these three buttons by defining uh, uh, for example the set of spores that we want to select okay so let's assume that we have some information somewhere for example the spores that are uh, or the, sorry, the games that may be poker maybe uh, i don't know blackjack Uh, what is, what's in the slide as an example uh, chess uh, tetris i don't know hmm? some different games and they want these buttons to be created according to this list of games so it, the idea is that somewhere we have some information we will learn later how to uh, load this information from a database on the server side for the moment we are just putting the information here inside the javascript okay but uh, uh, so we can tell the button group which are the names of the buttons that uh, uh, it should render so we should pass the names with the games array Okay, so this is an array. Let's assume that this should be only visible to the application. Okay, so it's an external information. When I create button groups, I'm telling this but dear button group, render some buttons with these names. The button group doesn't even care about uh, whether they are games uh, or, or recipes uh, or colors uh, and so on. So uh, this means that this button group uh, should render uh, many buttons, uh, one for, e for per each element of the props.names property. So I, I'm no longer writing them like this, but I may, may use a map function, usually props.name. This is an array of names. And I'm creating an array of simple buttons. So uh, each element and each single name will be translated to a simple button with a given name. So what I'm doing in saying, uh, I'm receiving an array, names, sorry, not name, names, uh, plural, okay? The button group receives a property called names. This property is an array of strings. In this case, we know it's an array of strings. And so we may, match, we may map for each name, for each string, okay? Uh, we create a simple button component by giving it a property name okay so in this case we are transforming an array of strings into an array of simple buttons and we are returning a div that contains an array of buttons hmm? let's see how it works okay now it will create four buttons instead of three because the array was uh, of length four and all of them are still saying hi because we still didn't use the, this property. But we may change it very quickly because instead of hi, we may say props.name. Props.name. And in this case, I'm getting the, the buttons with the, current, uh, the, with, with the correct uh, name on it. Okay? Um, the we we get a warning here, which is in red, so it actually is an error, and saying, okay, but you remember you created, uh, sorry, you you returned an array of elements, and you forgot uh, to add a unique key property to the elements of the array itself. Okay, so this is something that we should correct, uh, and uh, it should be corrected here. 
so whenever we are creating we are returning an array of element each uh, each uh, item of the array must have its own unique key so we must pass a key equal to some value that makes uh, these five uh, with four buttons different having different keys so they will be uh, they are recognized by react uh, and they it will not they will not be confused okay this is used for efficiency reason when we are going to add or modify these buttons react we will be able to know exactly from the key value we'll know exactly which button was modified and which were still identical so we just have to provide unique values in this case the name is good enough we can provide names numbers ids or whatever so if i save this i will reload the application and i don't have the the warning anymore okay for these four buttons okay um, right now it's just everything is static now i want when the user clicks on a button uh, for this button to be highlighted but when i highlight chess uh, then poker if, if it were if it was the previous uh, let's say selected one will have to be uh, non, not highlighted anymore. So the question is, uh, which component has the information about uh, which button is, is currently pressed, is currently selected? I think the only component that, needs, that may have this information is the button group. Button group should know and manage which button is the selected one. Right? Each button cannot know which other buttons they are and cannot deselect them and so on. Okay? So, uh, this, the information about what is the current state of the game, what is the currently selected game, is some information that the button group uh, needs to have here. So, okay, let's create a state. Uh, const, uh, let's call it uh, selected and set selected equal to use state and we can leave, leave it undefined okay I don't pass anything so uh, the selected variable will be undefined um, Let's, for the moment, uh, just imagine that we are selecting the initial value of poker. Then we will modify it, just to see what happens. So, um, how can you use this information? The selected variables knows which of the four buttons is currently the good one. Okay? So, I could give this information to every simple button by saying, oh, dear simple button, you are the chosen one. You are the selected one. Okay, so maybe I have a, pro, um, a property that maybe I may call chosen that uh, is a Boolean that is true whether the name of the component is uh, equally, equal to the selected name. And what I do, okay, so this chosen property will be false, 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 except for the button whose name is poker, where this property will be true. Right? So this chosen property is now received by the component, by the simple button component, that may use it to modify its rendering for example if uh, if uh, if i'm the chosen one if props dot chosen then i can return let's do a very stupid things uh, thing of returning the button name with two asterisks okay we could use uh, in the in the github example you have the we use the um, bootstrap styles to change the button, but 
so what i did is let's create a state in the button group that remembers which is the good one give each button the information about whether they are the selected one or not and according to this the button will, will render itself in a different way so in this case we see that poker is the selected one because it's self uh, uh, say displayed with uh, with some asterisks and the other one didn't add the asterisks because they were not the selected ones okay if we inspect this application with the react inspector we see that we have uh, the button group that contains uh, some props names and uh, some state and the current value of the state is poker if we see the call of the simple button we see that the first one received the name poker and chosen true and the other ones received their name and chosen false for all the other cases okay so we are designing a simple button that receives a, a value for the, the name and a boolean that will tell it whether is the chosen one or not okay okay uh, but now uh, again it's not working because if i click on blackjack or on chess on tetris uh, i should uh, uh, change the value the problem is that okay it's very easy to add a non-click event here to the button uh, especially to the ones that are not the chosen one so because if it's already chosen i don't need to select it and what 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 could i what could i do here I should call the uh, use set selected to myself. Okay, this is what I should do, of course, in a callback function. But the set selected method is not accessible from this function because, sorry, because it's defined. The set selected function is not defined inside simple button because it's private to the button group. Okay, so I have a, a state which is uh, defined correctly into a component, but this state needs to be updated from a lower component, from a child. A child cannot, uh, cannot modify the state of a parent. The flow of information is only from parent to child. I pass the properties from a parent to the children and so on. So how could they solve this problem? Of course, the, the on click must be in the simple button. It cannot be anywhere else. The only solution is that, of course, I move this information to the father and I give to the simple button the reference to the update function. So basically, this action, which is what I should do, I declare it here const update uh, update selected okay which is a function that takes a, a name and set sets this name for example and this update selected Of course, it may call set selected here with the parameter that I give it. So I can, it, it can change the selected name to whatever I want, just the parameter of this function. I don't call this function from button group, but I want to call it from simple button. And so I should also pass this function reference. Let me go to, into a new line. Uh, pass this function reference update as a new prop so I have an additional property which is not a value but it's a function and the function will be passed down to the simple button and I give the reference of the function to be called here so I may have two different names I chose to have the same name for for, sim for simplicity for simplicity and in this case, at the on click, at the on click, we should schedule 
to call props dot update selected with the name of my property of my button so the children may ask the parent to modify its state because the parent allowed it to ask this information by giving it a, a property that points to a function that is able to do the modification uh, Alessandro is asking could we pass directly set selected instead of update selected uh, the answer is yes it's possible but uh, usually the the parent component wants to do some more checks uh, i don't want just to the children to manipulate my state uh, uh, in a wild way okay uh, so this, in this case we are just passing through uh, but in many cases uh, the 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 action the the, the, the child will get a method that will do some checks and then update the states or will have more complex logic the idea is that the logic for managing the state is inside this function should be inside this function and so it should be uh, encoded by uh, by these callbacks and the children should not know the details uh, of how i manage the state hmm? but technically you can also pass the reality set selected in this case it would make sense because it's very easy um, marco is asking could we use on click on button group function using n instead of props name uh, you want sorry on click here, I mean, you mean uh, adding the on click to the button group call? Um, or the on click to the simple button here? Okay. Uh, on the on click on the return of the button group function. So here, basically. Um, but simple button doesn't have, uh, okay, uh, on click. Uh, is predefined for uh, DOM components. Okay, so you can uh, the on click attribute. If you add an on click attribute to your own component, you must in any case use it and propagate it to the, to the children of your component. So it doesn't automatically register an event tender to the, all the to all the children. Okay, uh, event tender should be registered only on real uh, real DOM nodes. So in this case, buttons or React code. So or not that are know what to do with that. So it's not automatic. Hmm? Um, so we could do that, but you should, any, any, in any case, repeat it down here. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I will come to the other question. Let's see it, if it works first. Okay. Huh? Okay, it does, and it does. It doesn't have any any further errors or warnings while it's working. Okay, so every time we click here, we see that uh, uh, the, the button group state will change. You see the state here. It's updated with some delay, of course, because the inspector takes time. Uh, and so we are clicking on the on, a, on an event generated by the button and this will change the state of the parent and what happens in react is that uh, when i call this uh, set selected the name uh, with this name the selected state is changed changing the selected state will rerun this function so we'll re-execute this return we are redoing the map and recreating everything Okay, I'm redoing the map, and basically this uh, attribute will, will be different. And since I'm redoing this map, I'm also redoing all these, uh, sorry, all these simple buttons. Okay. Fortunately, we have the key attribute from which uh, React is able to see that some of the components didn't change. So they, they don't need to be re-rendered. Some other change because their chosen state uh, went from true to false or to, from false to true and then uh, those components will be re uh, had have been re-rendered so basically if i click on chess i need to re-render blackjack because i need to remove the asterisks and to uh, re-render chess 
but I don't need to render poker or Tetris. React is able to do this kind of, of optimization because it remembers the old uh, versions. Versions it, it may compare the the properties, and uh, uh, it knows the key, so it knows uh, uh, which is which, which button is which, and so it can uh, distinguish them and check them separately. And also, if uh, by chance I would add one button or remove one button, the key attribute uh, is able to re um, let's say conserve the mapping even if, if the buttons are are shuffled or are modified or so on. Okay, so basically we change one property and automatically we trigger the rendering again of the button group and the rendering again of two of the four simple buttons. But this is transparent to us. We only have to you know, uh, think reactively. If the state has this value, then I need to render this. So there's this top-down flow from the properties and the state and every, each component says, okay, what should I render? if my state has this value and if my properties have this value. First flow, bottom up, uh, top down. And then we have a bottom up flow where every com every low level component says, okay, but when this happens, if I have an event ender, when this happens, what should I change? Should I change something on my state? If I have a state, should I change something on my parent states? if the parent state allows me to do it. So we have a top-down data flow and a bottom-up control flow. But everything is, uh, let's say, summarized in state changes. We don't have any, any moment in which we need to decide ourselves which components we need to be rendering, what we have to modify in the DOM. No, we just change the state and everything is recomputed for us automatically. Um, you have a couple of questions, then we can have a break, <laughs> of course. Uh, Giuseppe is asking, is it better to separate the logic? We are joining a specific logic in simple button of one of the above component, but maybe simple button can be called in other ways on components. Um, okay, I understand what you're saying. You say that this simple button right now is uh, uh, assuming that when it's clicked, uh, it should do some uh, uh, update selected uh, action. Huh? You could be more uh, general, of course. Okay. Um, what we could do is uh, here just write something more general, like a button pressed, like a button pressed uh, property, and uh, um, use this. Uh, the knowledge about uh, the button press should update the selected only in the caller function, only in the button group. Mm -hmm. uh, it will become a bit more complex because then you have to uh, understand that the button is pressed. Uh, right now we are passing the, um, the name. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, this name, uh, in, this, in this case, we have a, a list okay, of, um, of buttons. So whenever uh, something happens on a button, the button should tell us I'm this one, okay, I'm not the other one. So this should some collaboration from the point of view of the button. But basically the button doesn't know what happens when it calls this method. Basically we tell the button, when the you have been clicked, call this method. And this method could do anything, even destroy the button itself, okay? Uh, the button doesn't know it. Um, so maybe it's the naming of the property that is give some information, it's, bi it's binding some behavior. Hmm? Uh, available say, can a simple button overrate update selected to use a prop different than name? Can simple button override update selected to use a prop? You mean uh, uh, available, you mean changing something here? So if it plays tricks and says, okay, yeah, here I'm writing poker instead of a uh, prop does name. Is that what you mean? Um, and uh, so while uh, you are, uh, yes, uh, yes, I could do whatever I want, of course, but uh, okay, you mm, there, there's no protection basically. Okay, when a component say, okay, I'm this one and the other one, and uh, if they if they cheat, <laughs> but. Uh, 
okay, you are playing against yourself, so basically, so it's your code. Uh, it's better to have something easy, but there's no, actually, it's just a calling a function with a string, with a string parameter, nothing that binds it uh, uh, in any way. No, if, if you want it, yeah, there's nothing special for that. The, um, this function of place selected doesn't know from which component it was called, unless the component itself is willing to tell. Uh, so it's, it's on us basically. Um, Lorenzo is asking whether you can access a state variable one from a set variable two function. Yes, yes, you can do that normally because inside the, the rule is that when you are trying to change one variable inside the set state, you should not access that's the same variable for the reason that we saw before. But you can access other variables that will be constant at that time. So yes, it's possible to. Uh, inside a set variable, you should always think uh, everything to be constant. Properties are, are constants, other states are constant. Your, your, the only thing that changes is your little variable, little state variable that you are changing right now. This is going to change asynchronously. Everything else, uh, imagine it as frozen in time, as constant. Of course, if there are many updates to many different state variables, React will the, uh, schedule them sequentially in some way and at the end of all the updates it will re-render the, the components so everything eventually will be in place and everything will be updated hmm? okay cowpanga uh, uh, in letter 24 n okay and uh, uh, yes, yeah, and it's just uh, the argument of the arrow function. So it's a free variable. You can call it uh, uh, as you want. Uh, it's, it will take the no, uh, in turn all the values for the array. Okay, in the math function, the first parameter is the uh, the array function. Uh, maybe yes, yes. So you can you can you can call it as you want. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, what we can do is to stop for a moment, have some break. We already have a, had a long structure, um, basically in the first uh, in the first lecture, and in the what remains of the second hour, uh, we can try to do um, one, uh, one another exercise. Uh, maybe we don't complete it, uh, uh, but uh, let's try to reason about where to put the states, how to put the properties, and so on. Okay, so it's something that. Uh, uh maybe i already have it open just to show it before the break it's already on on github yes this one this react scores that uh, oops let me stop the other one otherwise they conflict in the port uh, what's wrong with you Ah, okay, yeah, no. Uh, okay, I, I didn't have the, I didn't write the npm install. Okay, but if you go onto on GitHub, there is a project called React Scores, and it's actually this code. So in the in the in the break, I try to clone and uh, do the npm install of this project, um, where we have uh, another version of this of the usual uh, scores uh, uh, table with all the scores of the exams. And this is just a static version. You see that it's just a, uh, one component that contains static data. So we try to move it and transform it into a dynamic component with some data that can be created. And so break it down into different components and try to reason about where to put the states, where to put the callbacks, and so on. OK, so while this is installing, we may have a break. Uh, then now it's 10:30, so we can uh, uh, see again at 10:45 uh, for this example. So in the meanwhile, we can start it, and uh, uh, and we'll start thinking about uh, um, modifying it from the static version, totally static version, into a, a real application with many components. So the question for your break is, uh, which components you would you create? Uh, and uh, which state and properties would each of these components have? 
we'll see uh, again in 14, in 15 minutes for the answers to these questions okay thank you